Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Casbold and today I will be presenting a problem from the topic of queuing theory. And the problem comes from the book Probability Models by Sheldon M. Ross. Okay, so let me start with the reason why I chose this model. The reason why I chose this model, or this problem, sorry, was because it actually involves a particular tweak in the modeling process which is different from what we have traditionally learnt in class. So that's why I chose this problem. Okay, so in this problem we have a service system that consists of two servers, A and B. Now arriving customers only enter this system if A is free. And if a customer does enter the, enter the system, then he's, he or she is immediately served by A. Now, when his service by A is completed, he goes to B only if B is free. So if B is busy, he leaves the system. Upon completion of the service at B, the customer departs. So the customer leaves the system. Assuming that the Poisson arrival rate is two customers an hour and the A and B serve our respective exponential rates of four and two customers per hour, we want to find the following questions. What proportion of customers enter the system? What proportion of entering customers receive service from B? What is the average number of customers in the system? What is the average amount of time that an entering customer spends in the system? Okay, so for this question, instead of using numerical values, we're going to let the equal, we're going to let the, uh, the arrival rate be lambda, so this here, lambda, and we're going to let the respective service rates be mu, for the first, for server A, it's going to be mu A, and for server B, it'll be mu B, this just makes it easier. And in the end, all, all we have to do is just substitute the numbers in. So, just to make it a bit more simpler. Okay, so first of all, we want to begin by modeling this problem. All right. So first, firstly, what I'll do is I'll draw a picture of what this looks like. So if we have a look here, we have, a, we have two servers. A and B, we have the customers. So the customers enter the system and they can only enter if A is free. If A is busy, they leave. Okay, now given that there's a customer in A, and A will only move on to B if B is free. So if B is full, or in other words, the server, the server or the sort of system is entirely full, then if A is served before B, A will leave. And likewise, upon when B has been served, the customer leaves the system. Okay. So if we were to model this traditionally, as we've learnt in class, we would generally be considering the number of people in the system, right? So our sample space would look like, or state, sorry, state space would look like this. So we could either have no one in the system, one person in the system, so that means we could have someone in either A or B, or we have two people in the system, A and B are both full. Okay, now if we draw our rate diagram, it looks something like this. And then what we would do is we would figure out what our rates are between each state, so what the rate is from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 1, and 1 to 0. Now the problem here is it's actually difficult to figure out some of the rates because if you think of it, we have two possible cases of there being one person in the system. We could have someone in, in server A or someone in server B. So that's two possible rates that could happen from moving from one to zero. So it makes it difficult to 
actually figure out what the what the rate is. Likewise for one to two, it's very difficult as well. So instead of modeling it this way, we can break it down further. We can look at the state according to the occupancies of each server. So let's have a look. So we can look at it like this, right? We could have no a null state, so so none of the servers are occupied. We could have just A is occupied, just B is occupied, both A and B are occupied, so the server's full. Oh, sorry, the system's full. Sorry, get to mix up with server and system. Okay, now we can actually rewrite this in terms of coordinates. So. The first coordinate could be server A, second coordinate could be server B. So in other words, zero, zero means that no one's sitting in A or B. One, zero means that someone's sitting in A, no one's sitting in B. Likewise, we have no one's sitting in A, someone's sitting in B. One, one server's full, two people in the server. Our next step is to draw our transition rate diagram. So it'll look like this. We have our four states, right? Zero, A, B, A, B. And we have arrows moving around. Now I'm not actually gonna go through the direction of the arrows because it, it could take a while. But what we'll do is we'll have a look at the rates at which they move from each state so if you have a look at the rate from, from from zero to A, well, if we go from zero, zero to one, zero, then someone's entering the system, so it's gonna be rate lambda. Let's have a look at the rate from B to zero. So we're going from someone sitting in B only to nothing in the system. So it's gonna be the service rate of B, which is, which is mu B. Now, if we look at this one, A to B. So essentially what's happening is we have someone who's being served by A, and because B is free, no one, no customer can move on to B because they can only go by A first, it's, it's sequential. So therefore, this customer here, upon being served by A, will move straight on to B. So we can go to this state at a rate of the service rate of server B, so it's mu, sorry, server A, which is also mu A. Okay. Now, let's have a look at the arrow from here to here. So we have a full server going from just A, so someone's left B. So it's just gonna be mu B. Now let's have a look over here. We have someone going from B, to A, B. So someone's entered the system, so it's going to be Lambda. And and now we have the rate moving from one, one and backwards, so we're losing someone from A, so it's just going to be um, mu A, that's our rates. So that's our diagram, okay. That's our transition rate diagram. So let's have a look at our Q matrix. So when we put it all into our Q matrix, it looked like this. Pretty simple, okay. Our next step is we wanna find the stationary state distribution. So we, we want to solve the following. We want to solve this. We want to solve that equation where these are our stationary probabilities. So that the long run proportion of, for example, the amount of time in the long run that the system will be, will have none in it, or it will just be in state where there's just A someone in A, or someone in just B, 
or two, or, or the system's full. <clears throat> we can obtain the following equations. So we get this set of linear equations and we solve them. We solve them for pi naught, pi a, pi b, and pi a b in terms of lambda mu a and mu b. So I'm not actually going to solve them in this presentation because it's actually quite tedious, but it's actually really easy to solve it. So there's no point in solving it. But the whole model process is very important because you have to apply it in order, in order to get the answer, the, the correct, the correct stationary probabilities. Okay. So we'll have a look at part A. So if we go back to the question. So part A says what proportion of customers enter the system? So this is a long run proportion of customers that enter the system. So over an infinite amount of time. So essentially, we want to look at the probability of a customer entering the system, right? A customer's only going to enter the system if state A is free, right? And state A is free if we have, we're in state zero upon arrival or if we're in state B upon arrival because state A will be free in this case. So the answer is just going to be pi naught, the long run time in our, our system spends with, with no one in it, plus the long run time our system spends it with just someone in B. That's our answer. Okay, so let's have a look at part B. Okay, so part B says, what proportion of entering customers receive ser service from B? Okay, so you have to think, right? Not every customer will receive service from B, right? Some customers won't even enter the service or, or the system, sorry. So obviously they, 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 they can't be served at all. Also, there are some customers who will be served by A, but because B will be full, they can't be served by B. So what we can do is, is we can actually look at this as probably really arriving customer is served by B and we can use Bayes' rule to figure this out. So if you think of it, the probability, have a look, have a look here. We have a sum of the probability a customer is served by B, an arriving customer is served by B, given, given our, st we have, given the system is already in, in this state, X, Y. Now X is just the position pretty much of, of the um of the system. So X and Y can equal a zero or a one, right? Times the probability of the state, right? X, Y element of S. So we, we write this out, right? So it's just the sum of all the probabilities of, of different states conditioned times their various probabilities. As you can see, So I'll just move that back a bit, just to make sure you can get a good look at that. Very good. Okay, so let's move on to the next line. So if you have a look here, if you have a look at our first example, probably being served by B given we're already in state one zero, is gonna be zero. The reason why is because we can't, we won't enter the system, right? Because there's someone sitting in A. So it's it's full. So we can't we can't go in. Now the probability was served by B, given we're in state zero one. So that implies that someone sitting in B at, at that time, but no one's in A, is possible because we can move into state A, but it's not certain because someone's still sitting in B. Okay. This one here is certain, right? Because no one's in the system, so eventually we will get to B. So it's just going to be, so this one here will come down to just pi naught, right? And likewise, back back there, it'll just be that probability times times pi B, right? And this here's going to be zero because there's someone already sitting in A. What? Likewise again. So we get this. Okay, so when you think of it, the probability, if if we have a look at this second term. The probability served by B given we're in zero one, 
right? So we're arriving, right? It's already in state zero one. If we move into if we move into position A, then it t t technically the system becomes what it becomes state one one or A B, right? So if you have a look down here, so it's the same as the probability we're served by B given the customer is sitting in server A and then another customer is sitting in B as well, times pi B times pi naught. This is equal to, so the, the probability that we're served by B, in, in order for us to be served by B, the service time for, for B has to be shorter than the service time of A. Because if, if it's longer, then that means that we'll be served by A, but we'll leave because B is full. But that can't happen in this case. We have to have it less than in, in, in order to find a probability. So we do that and we solve this. We, we forget this probability by, by looking at the joint, di the joint density function of this system. So we have this. So we're just integrating our joint density function, joint exponential density function. We come down to this, and it can be shown that our final result 